This is a customer-specific configuration card. It is always required when you want to load your application requirements into the RF1000 reader. It's very easy to create and I'll show you how it's done now. To create your customer-specific config card, you need three things. A config card. This can be empty or a previously written card you no longer need. The config editor tool, which you can download for free from the support pages. And third, an RF1000 reader. This has two tasks. On the one hand, to test your specific application, and on the other, to write the config card. The reader creates end-to-end -end encryption with the config card, meaning that the config card can only be read by RF1000 readers. This process is therefore also safe in terms of your security requirements. Now let's get back to our config editor. In an empty project, the configuration components initially only contain administrative info. First, choose a memorable name for your project. I'll call this one Tutorial. And we see that one of the messages shown in the left-hand area immediately disappears. Now for the technical settings. These are added using the Extended Configuration button. There are two categories of settings here. First, we have two entries that start with Add. These are used to change the settings for RFID protocols. In other words, everything that needs to be adjusted in communication between the reader and the transponder. The second setting deals with the device settings. This is where the host interface can be reconfigured. In other words, the way the client application should talk to the reader. I'll make it easy for myself, since I know that when I downloaded the config editor, it already came with a few sample configurations. I can also import these here. I select the file with the keyboard emulation to import, and I only transfer the transponder types I need. If I want, I can continue to edit the imported components. But I think that my configuration is the way I want it, so I'll move on to testing. I click on Transfer Configuration to Reader. I select the USB interface and the transfer happens quickly. The LED on the reader now turns green. I expected that to happen, since I configured the LED function in the device settings. So now I move on to testing the keyboard emulation function. The screen shows my test setup with all the essential components. In the keyboard emulation, I expect to see the read data from the reader where my cursor is. So I simply select an empty Excel table, position my cursor in the middle and start my test with a selection of different transponders. All of these transponders need to be recognized. We see that every card's unique ID is entered in a separate field in the Excel table. And the reader LED always signals that a new card is read by changing color. Here I still have an old skiing card and also my Siemens ID. Everything works. And this concludes the test. Now I freeze my project status by clicking on Save as Finalize. In the upper area of the screen, the color changes from yellow to green to signal that my project is now finalized for productive use. It is now no longer possible to change the project data. 
However, if my project still needs to be worked on, for instance if errors have been identified, I can use the Create New Version button to return my project to the yellow draft mode. But I won't do that just now. Instead, I quickly show you how to create a config card. To create a config card, I go to the Create config card function. The window shows that the reader is waiting for a config card. I hold a config card over the reader field and there we have it, it's already written. The window with the project data appears on the screen. Now we need to wait a moment and to not immediately click to close the pop-up window. Instead, we need to write the on-screen information onto the config card with a pen. At least the name and version are important, because there is no way to read this data from the card later. Incidentally, it is part of our security concept that only the RF1000 reader can read something from a config card and not any other person or application. And this completes the config card creation process. I now send this card to the system engineer so that they can configure all the readers before installing them in the application. Config card handling is extremely simple there. I show you just how easy in my video RF1000 config card handling for system engineers.